Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and um, you know, it's one of those things, man. I was such a, I was such a big to go um in the WC WCW days as Death Their Roads would say, baby. Uh, you know what's so funny about that? Real quick, uh, I, I, I one of my things, uh, probably my favorite show on the WWE Network right now is uh something else to wrestle with. Um. Big fan, big fan of uh, of the the Pritchard and, and Conrad Bruce Pritchard Conrad Thompson uh, podcast. I was uh, I was uh, privileged uh, to interview Bruce Pritchard on the Wrestling Inc. podcast um, earlier this year, and um, you know I am a big fan of the Wrestling Inc., uh, of the uh, something else to wrestle with. And man, uh, he did a dusty he did a dusty impression when I interviewed him and. Um, you know, he does some fantastic impressions. I understand why he does really good impressions because, you know, he, uh, you know, he explained to me uh, that you know, he was able to, you know, that's just a part of his deal. Like he has to, he, he, he kind of channels the impression to really let the wrestlers know just really get, you got to live it. You got to, you got to be it, you know, and, uh, and he has uh, such an amazing Dusty Rose impression. And you know what? Dusty Rose, baby, was is my second all-time favorite wrestler. Sting is the goat, but Dusty Rose is number two to me. He's my he's my second favorite, baby. So what I do, baby, is for the past thirty years, I've been listening and looking at promos from Dusty Rose, baby. So. I tell you what, Bruce Pitcher, you might have your own impersonations, baby, but I got my own impersonations of Dusty Rules, and I think I'm a little bit good. It may be a little bit baby, better, baby. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I'm a big Dusty Rose, Mark. Uh, <laughs> he's my second favorite all time. But I was a big Goldberg, Mark, too, back in the days of WCW. So it was such an honor and privilege uh, to interview Bill Goldberg. What's going on? Wrestling Inc. chat. We are having some fun uh, today, as we always do, ladies and gentlemen. We got loads and loads of trivia. Uh, we're going to take it a little bit somber uh, as a part of the show. Uh, we had a a, a death, a, a pro wrestling death, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, but what's going on, everybody in the chat room? I'm excited about uh, your interaction, just like I do every week. I absolutely love that's one of my favorite parts of the show is the live interaction. So. If you're listening to this archive, thank you. Uh, you're just as important as everybody who's watching it live. But if you're watching an archive, there's just a there's just a special there's just a special uh, 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 ball and and, and uh, just a element of fun. We're live here, uh, interacting via the Wrestling Inc. Um, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, the tr uh, you f uh, <laughs> let it rip. I'll uh, see. So that's my point. Come on, get up. Come on, get up, rip. So we we're talking, we're going to be talking about no holds barred at the end of the show. And I'm excited. I'm excited to, to, <laughs> to talk about no holds barred. I watched no holds barred today. Thank you. Uh, Darian, uh, says great show. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, you know, uh, follow us on, I subscribe on iTunes You'll be able to hear the interview uh, that I had from Bill Goldberg. That's uh, uh, oh, see, that's a good one too, Jason. We'll talk about that one too. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. Uh, thank you, GHP. How are you, my good fellow? Uh, he asked, "Happy birthday again." Thank you very much. My birthday was yesterday, uh, so thank you very much uh, for for uh, remembering that. That um, that is always uh, very special to me. I love my birthdays. I'm just so grateful for every single birthday. Uh, you know, some a lot of people say, how are we going to do your birthday? Or how do you feel about birthday? Uh, well, it's just another day. I, you know, that, thank you. Wild Boy DX, Jerry, Joseph, thank you so much. Darian, uh, thank you, everybody who's wishing me happy birthday right now. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, I am so thankful for every single year. You know, I don't, you know, I, I don't have to be here. You know, my age, there's a lot of people who's, um, who's died younger than me. So, uh, it's, uh, thank you, Lee. 
Um, and, and so I'm, I'm just uber grateful, man. Every year is a year that God has given me and blessed me with, and I'm um, honored and privileged to to do it and live it and and have fun and and, and serve Him and and and, and reflect Him and uh, and and love my family and love wrestling. I mean, what better life can you get from that? And for that, I say, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so yeah, we're we're gonna talk about um, no holds barred tonight, man. I'm really, really excited about. I'm really excited about this, and I was so happy to watch it today, as opposed to like uh, last week after the show or something. It's so fresh in my mind right now. I watched No Holds Barred probably about um, about five hours ago, probably about four or five hours ago. And so it's fresh in my mind, 1989, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're, we're pushing the rewind button of 29 years ago, pressing the rewind button. We are going back to 1989 and we're going to talk about Hulk Hogan's terrible wardrobe and everything in between. Uh, tonight when we talk about no holds bars so i'm really excited about that in the meantime ladies and gentlemen let's introduce the coals with the most without further ado evan tech proud how are you tonight sir hey i'm doing okay how's everybody doing awesome uh, awesome thank you you know, we talked about fair, so mm-hmm. didn't know it was your birthday, but just now. So, uh, yes, definitely, uh, wish you would definitely have a birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, um, I'm excited, and thank you for everybody who's continuing to in the chat room to wish me happy birthday. If you are somehow listening to this audio through the audio, uh, um, okay, so, so GHP, yes, his name is Evan, E V A N, the co host. And Jerry uh, is asking me, am I a basketball fan? I am a basketball fan. I'm a big Bulls fan. I am a very aware. I'm Ohio, I'm from Ohio. So people would think that I'm a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, but I am not a Cleveland Cavaliers fan. Um, I am a Chicago Bulls fan. So, I mean, ever since I knew about professional basketball, I was hooked on Michael Jordan. And I uh, started watching basketball during the Chicago Detroit uh, rivalry when they, you know, uh, the, the bad boys, when, uh, when, when, when Detroit was the bad boys back in the late 80s. And that's when I started watching um, basketball. And uh, Jordan was uh, a few years fresh in. And um, I've never wavered. I've not wavered one iota from – Chicago Bulls. Yes, we've had some struggles. Uh, and there was a, a few. There was a few years where we had a, 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 a solid uh, front when we had uh, you know Derrick Rose and we made it to the playoffs. Uh, of course, we had Jimmy Butler. He was fantastic. Uh, we tried when we brought Rondo in, uh, but that didn't really do much. And then we tried. When we brought. Um, um oh goodness Dwayne Wade in and um nah, yeah nothing still <laughs> so uh but LeBron's going to LA and um I was expecting that um especially after you know only la- I think I, I think I call five games I think as far as all the conversations that I had it was five games um but you know Cleveland just didn't have a shot um but you know they, it was unfortunate for them, and then and now uh, the Warriors just signed um, uh, Kyrie and Jimmy the Bulls tonight. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, okay, let me get let me go up. I'm, uh, all these questions here. Uh, the watch WWF's build to WWE's build to no, no holds barred to the network, and the brain is amazing. I have not seen that yet. I do want to see that. Um, so I'm talking about LBJ now to LA. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, didn't surprise me once what whatsoever. He wants championships. Uh, I think it was what 130 uh, some odd million, some somewhere around there. 100 about 140 million. Uh, someone in the chat gave me the exact number of 
uh, the it was a I think it was like a three year deal. Um, so yeah, I, here's the thing. I don't. I mean, they got Lance Stevenson too uh, with that, but I don't think that you know. I don't think that's going to do much to LA, especially since the Golden State just got. Uh, oh goodness, I forgot his his name. It just he just went to Golden State, just got signed. Uh, he just got signed to them. Uh, one hundred thirty-four million. Thank you, Wild Boy. Uh, yes, the Marcus Cousins. That yep, that's who went to Golden State. So, uh, and plus, and plus, it's going to be even tougher to me. It's going to be even tougher for LeBron because he's on the West Coast now. So every single time he goes to the finals, he would have to go past Golden State, who's a Western Conference team. You know, with Cleveland, he could just go. He could just go uh, win the East Coast and go to the finals, and you know, and hopefully have a shot to beat Golden State. But now it's even tougher for LeBron because in order for him to go to the Western Conference Finals, he would have to beat Golden State. So it, it you know, it's it, it's tougher for him. Yeah. I think the Barney, he need he need before he lost to the Warriors. He was going to go to LA, but the, well, you said the thing is the West, the East is so ragged. The East is so easy. Yeah. And you have he's in the West. Like you said, the tough thing is you got to go to State. I've been in the basketball since the eighties, but the weird thing is basketball, hockey, the only two, the only two sports where I do not. I don't know every team in what conference. I know there was the Lakers of West, but I don't know, you know, like every team with the East and the West Conference. But I don't see the Lakers going past the Warriors. Because the good thing is that if they happen by America to get past the Warriors, they're pretty much going to win whoever comes up to you. True. True. Yeah. That's that's so, true. The LeBron is, people get mad at him because he he's, he's a guard in Cleveland. I know you're from Ohio. He's a guard in Cleveland, you know. Uh, you know, since Mark Price and you remember the old school Cavaliers. Oh, yeah. White, Mark Price, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hot Rod Williams. Don't forget about Hot Rod. Yeah, Hot Rod. Hot Rod and the bad boys were them in the mouth. But, yeah. You know, LeBron is with the guy to clean You know, he, he didn't. And he got a championship for you guys. And he, when he went to Miami, he was he's basically second tier. Dwayne Wade is like number one in Miami. Now he goes to LA, which is a great, huge market. But you already compared LeBron to Michael. Now you go to LA, no matter how great LeBron, and LeBron is great. He's oh yeah, he's probably, he's probably the best player in his. He's probably the best player in the NBA right now for sure. Yeah. 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 Yep. I mean, granted, uh, LeBron to be probably top ten. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's not. You know, put him. I still, no matter how great LeBron is, I'm not gonna put him. You know, up there with Jordan and Walt Chamberlain and Bill Russell. But he's great. I mean, he's the best role model you can. Anybody, he's the best role model at all in us for the NBA. Yep. But the fact is, he's in LA. The thing is, people want to keep comparing him to Jordan and Kobe. There'll never be a Kobe or Jordan. But now he's under the the, the, the shadow of Magic. Kareem, Kobe, Shaq. So, got to throw Larry Bird in there, too. Uh, I'll tell you, Larry Bird. I mean, I'm talking as far as LA. You know, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, 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 as far as LA, he's always going to be held the pedestal. Okay, well, are you better than Jordan Kobe? Now you got Kobe, you got Magic, you got Kareem. There's so many, like, you know, those three in general, like the all time great Shaq. Yep. So um, I'm mean, gonna ready for him. Hey, for LeBron, I hope he. I see he gets one more ring in LA. Uh, the Warriors are probably going to number two, three. Uh, and then when they do, you can try to compare them to the Bulls. I don't see see see. Here's the problem. I don't see I don't see LeBron winning in L.A. I, I just I don't because especially with especially with Demarcus Cousins in there now, it's it's going to be even more tougher, you know, for for them to go. Uh, let me see. Uh, Lexi's asking, do you have any advice for a woman looking to start commentary on wrestling like you? Great question. Um, so, um. Don't I, I was speaking to someone about this uh, at church um, this past weekend. Uh, um, 
I found it so it's so cool, super super cool. Um, so I was I'm a small group leader in my church, and my church is uh, pretty big, about 3,500 people. And so we have like a family room. And while I'm recovering from back surgery, I don't go in the main sanctuary much. Uh, I, I go into the family room. Uh, and so there was another uh, couple there and I'm talking to them at the church. And, uh, and so they uh, found out the lady, <laughs> the guy and the lady has nine kids. Uh, there was like two, there were like, there were like two kids in the room. And then the other seven was in childcare. Uh, and it was just amazing. I, I love it's, it's such an inspiration. I love seeing big families like like multi people, kids. Uh, it's, it's so amazing. It's such hard work and such just uh, nine kids is amazing. <laughs> and um, so at the end of the conversation, um, I was just telling them, you know, what I did. And, and they were like, really? you're a wrestling fan. And so I found out that they were wrestling fans. And, uh, so the guy, I never met him in my life. Um, I was like, yeah, so my, I host, you ever, I, I said, I have a, my own podcast called the pancakes of power Sam show. He's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that podcast. I was like, yeah, it's me. He's like, Oh wow. So that's super cool to me. Uh, and you know, it, it's, uh, we were just talking about just, just, uh, the wrestling cause he, uh, the, the wife, has they they have a 14 but i believe the daughter's 14 that i was talking and and so i was she was asking kind of like the same thing that lexi was and i said a similar thing to her that i'm about to say to to lexi and to anybody else listening who any other female listening you know and male too really it's just across the board it's one of those things that i've been in i've been a journalist um for over 10 years now and, and been really into it as far as making a living for I'd say five, you know, four or five years, really solid within the past few. This podcast has been uh, going on approaching six and a half years. And I say to her and I say to everybody else for every, uh, for every one, yes, you'll probably get a hundred no's. <laughs> and and that's especially in the beginning, especially in the beginning of your uh, career as a journalist, as a as a podcaster, as a writer, that's going to happen. And so prepare yourself for that. If you don't have tub skin to accept people saying no to you, this isn't the business for you uh, because you're going to accept because because here's the thing. And it makes sense too, really. I mean, you know, we can we can make excuses of why it happens, but it makes perfect sense of why people would say no, because we've talked about this last week with Marty, Marty Elias was on the show. You know, if I'm there, there there's you know, podcasts come a dime a dozen, especially nowadays, especially in 2018. I started in 2012. So the podcast business was just started to real, really boom at the time and starting to grow some legs six years later you know, podcasts come a dime a dozen and they don't, and they don't last for long. And so to, for, for a wrestler or a wrestling personality to say, yes, I'm going to come on your show. It's going to, it takes a lot. I mean, that means that I'm, you have enough, you have enough traction in the business for me to say, I'm going to trust your vision and trust what you do to, to associate my name with it. And it makes sense. And so a lot of times when you're first starting, unless you, you know, unless you get a big break from a NBC sports or CBS sports or Yahoo sports, or anything like that, or a big publication, a sports illustrated, uh, Fox sports, uh, you know, so forth, unless you work at a big publication and starting a podcast, if you have an independent podcast and you're not a professional wrestler, it's tough. Trust me, it's tough, but. But at the same time, if you have that stick to itiveness, if you have that tough skin to accept those no's, you know, for every one yes, there's a hundred no's. Eventually, the hundred, you know, dwindles down to uh, 75 no's for every one yes, which dwindled down to 50, which dwindled down to 20, which dwindled down to five. You know what I mean? And now, thank God, I'm at the state where. I hardly ever, you know, get uh, no. And when I get no, it's for someone who says, thank you for asking. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm honored that you asked, uh, but I'm taking a break from, uh, you know, podcast this season for, you know, stuff like that. For instance, um, the rocks agent, um, responded to me and, and, and said, thank you. And things like that. His schedule doesn't permit it. Perfect. Makes perfect sense to me. Um, you know, and, and then, and you have to be persistent too, because a lot of times, a lot of these, a lot of the big name, um, names that that's been on the show, um, I, it, you have to be consistent. I mean, you have to go back and back and back and, and revisit and revisit and revisit and not be, um, and not be afraid to, to, to revisit, uh, for, for an interview. So thankfully, um, I was able to get uh, big, uh, Bill Goldberg and it was the, the, the process was very smooth and, and very easy. Um, uh, Booker T as well, but yeah, I mean, that's my advice. Hopefully it hopefully helps somebody and, uh, just stick with it. Um, don't be afraid to, um, to, to hear no, or get, get some tough skin to accept the notes. Uh, but if you hear 20 no's, you'll hear that one yes from that big name, uh, and it'll be all worth it. So stick with it. Um, th- don't be afraid to, um, to, 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 and, 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 and have a vision too. Don't just, don't just say I'm a podcaster to, to just be a podcaster, have a vision, write something down, make goals for yourself, you know, and, and that's what I do. I'm, I'm so thankful that this podcast actually generates revenue. But for uh, for years before before I actually got paid to do the podcast, man, I was shelling money left and right in this thing, and that's the investment that I made to uh, to be able to actually get money uh, to have this podcast now. So, you know that that comes with the territory. So, uh, great question, Lexi. I can chime in. She, yeah. with the young lady, I feel with the market, um, I didn't get a name. Sorry, guys. I'm not Lexi. Lexi. Um, I'll be back. Lexi. Yeah, I'll be back on the chat next week. Um, yeah, like that, I feel the, the female voice is very much needed. You rarely hear a female commentating. Right. The female voice in radio is very needed. So, like, like, like Chris said, I've had my show you know, five years. Chris, as a matter of fact, it's funny because Chris, you had this show again before I started mine. And then the thing is, like you said, you're going to get a million you know, you got to keep fighting for that yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. You got to, you want to make sure you take a risk. You know, what you can say is no. You mm-hmm. won't get a response back in time. You might get a the schedule don't permit. You might get an e contact me next week. Mm-hmm. And probably you might get a yes. So, like, the the package of power slam shows, then you know, the kids, it takes time, blood, sweat, tears, literally, uh, barely any sleep, up all right. night, <laughs> a lot of work going into it. Uh, the, the show is the plus one we've been doing six years of hard work. Mm-hmm. My show's been around more than five years. Me and, me and Chris, we, we have been through the same uh, tools and snares of agents and publicists and getting people. Going to shows, it, it, it took to me two to three years, and it was like the first time you just never know. You got the first guest that I had ever had on my show was my good friend Fred Hoffman. Yeah, that's a person in front of mine. He was my first guest, and I got him through a good buddy of mine who was also a book with a the keyboard. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yep, you know, connections, you know, like, like, yep, also. Well, yeah, you get connections, you get some more next, you can talk to them, you can talk to them, you can go to a local show, go build, build a rapport with them, and you'll get some ideas. You just never know. I emailed Jim Ross, I'm your friend with Jim Ross. I on my show a couple of times, interviewed him three times. I went out on case and he said, and I'm going to this on air. I just emailed the man. He emailed me back within five minutes, and that was three separate emails. And he sent me his personal email. Mm-hmm. And now I consider him a friend. So yeah. he just, I, I took a chance. Hey, let me just see. Let me just never know. So just keep it up. So yeah. Have your vision and make sure you have your own identity and you make sure your shows sound nothing like anybody. Right. Else. Yeah. And, and you know, it's so funny. I, I got to, I got to give a big shout out to Dave Lagana. Um, you have to. Mm-hmm. 
uh, uh, you you got you got to get you got to get connections in the business. You have to, uh, and you can't be afraid to ask questions because, uh, man, you know, <laughs> back backstage, a lot of people don't know what happens. Uh, just as far as just the growing pains that it comes from that, but man, big shout out to Dave Lagana. Um, a while ago, year some sometime back when I was just really trying to do some. Th- you know, just trying to continuing to rebrand pancakes and power slams and, and doing things that were separate from just any other podcast, man, you know, uh, we've, we've chat, he's been on the show before we've chatted plenty of times and he always was like, man, listen, you know, and he's doing fantastic with NWA right now with the pounds of gold. And, you know, he always availed himself to me, you know, like, hey, listen, I'm here. Ask questions. You know, he had his own podcast before, too. He, he used to write for WWE. So uh, and TNA. So he he's very well of the production part of it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I got to give a I got to give a shout out to Dave Lagana, man. He, he was really, uh, really just an amazing, intricate part on just my growth as a podcaster. Same thing with Day, uh, Bill Apter. Uh, he's another person I got to give a shout out to. Um, man, I've had some some really good conversations with him on the phone uh, as far as giving me nuggets as a journalist. Um, and you know he you know he talks about how he respects my work. And man, I mean Apter's been in the game for forty years, you know. And so to hear that, it's 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 amazing. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people in the pro wrestling business that uh, has really been helpful to me as far as just um, really giving me some great pointers. But those are two who who uh, come to mind first. Tom Pritchard's another person um, who comes to mind as far as, yeah, as far as uh, giving me some really good pointers um, just in the business. So those those three names, I think they get some some really good. I think they get their due respect yeah. tonight on the Pancakes and Power Slam show. So. Yeah, the, the, the people that uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I five years for me. I, I, I my show, I don't have the word podcast. I have radio because I'm impressed with the radio station. Actually, worked at an actual radio. Before a podcast, and you remember other song, and you hit shows going on before mm-hmm. it became a podcast with radio. So, you know, the delight of radio personalities and, and talking to people like Scott Gusto and Rob Long, Baltimore Legends, and have a shout out to Evan Ginsburg and Bill Astor, who me and he's also close friends with. And he's the only man who actually smacked me in my face to get away with the death. After this smacked me in my face, he <laughs> just <laughs> 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 um, People like that, Dr. Tom and, and, and Barry Bischoff, Jim Ross, radio people, and people that are and and Bruce Pritchett, Conrad, and uh, there's so many so many people that have Patterson. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you, you being one of my one of my brothers in the business, and, and so many people I can name some people. David Donner, I saw the email email before here and there. Um, and, and everyone, Tungo. Uh, uh, Glacier, Sunny Ono, so many people that have done it. Medusa, there's so many people in the business that you will learn from and, and you just, they just give you coins for well, how to talk. And you know, we make it seem like it's easy. But, <laughs> but try to do it, it ain't know, easy. Realize, uh, <laughs> how tough it is. Being, being, being a host and a co-host, uh, you realize, man, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a lot of what I've heard. Yeah, it's uh, and I say this. I've said this before. And I say it again. You know, I've I've chatted with uh, Shane Helms, and you know, he was like, "Listen, you've been on the show for this long, man. I uh, kudos to you because he said only I can only do it for so you know for a so, certain amount of time." And he explained to me that he actually had seasons. He would do a pod. He would do his podcast for a certain amount of month and then take a break off and go come back. He was like, man, you you do it all year long. He's like, man, kudos to you. And so, again, you know, that's that's encouraging to hear, you know, someone like a Shane Helms, uh, you know, doing that. So good stuff. Um, and, 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 you know, like Evan was saying, there's there's not a big female presence in the podcast world right now. So. You you you've got a leg up on people. You've got an inside track. So if that's something you want to do, do it uh, for sure. Uh, 
Yes. Um, Tom Pritchard, Dave Lagana, uh, Bill After have, have been really instrumental in uh, the success of this show as far as uh, some great advice. Uh, Robert saying I should interview Raj. Uh, I've it, There was a string for about a year. I think like 2016 maybe. Uh, for about a year, I had a uh, guest co-host every week uh, from different uh, wrestling outlets and uh, sports uh, publications. And um, Raj was on the show before. Uh, he was a co-host. So check that out. Two thousand, Just uh, e- uh, email it. Uh, I, I, I Google it is what I want to say. He was on the show with, uh, you know, of course, I have interviews every week. It was a 2016 show that I had Robbie E on and Raj was the, uh, was the co-host of that show. And I listened to it, I think last week. Uh, yeah. Robbie East podcast is, is really good by the way. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, listened to that show back, back again last week from 2016. It was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, somewhat, there's a bunch of questions. So. Cool. All right. So I think that's good for now. Keep the questions coming and, uh, we'll answer them, uh, as uh, time permit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that was a good buffer to a somber moment. Uh, we're about to, uh, get to the headlines and we're going to talk about, uh, um, a, a few things. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know what time it is. It is time for the headlines. Here we go. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the somber moment of the night. Uh, Matt Capitelli. Um, uh, yeah, it just. He, I'll say this, I I don't, I, I, I never met him in person, but we've, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed that we were able to interact, um, through, uh, social media. We were Facebook friends and we interacted. And so I, I do, um, I am blessed that I had an opportunity to, to interact with him in some fashion. I know I also uh, chatted with his wife as well. Uh, when he was uh, when he was uh, getting very ill, uh, interviewed his wife, and uh, she's she's a sweetheart as well. Um, I, I'll say this, man, and and, and uh, it, it's my show, so I can say it. <laughs> uh, you know, we live in a we live in a world that's um, is very politically correct, uh, and you know, it, it's. It's, it's one of those things that a lot of people and, I, and I'll just speak. I'll speak for myself here. Um, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I am uh, and, 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 um, and there's no shame. Uh, you, you see it in my Twitter. You see it in my Facebook. You see it in my social media. And most importantly, you see it in my life. I am a very, very strong Christian. Uh, I uh, about uh, 20 years ago, I turned my life around 180 degrees. I was uh, heading towards a very dark, dark direction in my life. And, uh, I decided to turn it around. Uh, God decided for me to turn it around and I haven't looked since. And, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, as far as, you know, the pro wrestling business can be a very, uh, dark business. It can be a very, uh, tempting business, a very evil <laughs> business in many, in many aspects, but you have those gems that I believe that God uh, specifically and intentionally send uh, in the pro wrestling business that gives people light and hope and inspiration that um, there's there's better. Um, and, and it's easy to get yourself caught up in just the um, it's, it's easy to get yourself caught up in the uh, the, the bad side. Uh, the, the the popular side of the pro wrestling business when it comes to uh, you know relationships and uh, you know temptations and things like that. But as far as from my interaction with him and especially all the people that I was actually spoke speaking to someone uh, who I've who I've 
got became friends with a former WWE wrestler, and uh, he he he's one of those. He he said the same thing. You know, he he was talking about how you know he's so blessed that he used to team with Capitelli, and he was talking about how he's so blessed that that he showed him. Uh, Christ before it was even before he even you know considered it and now he's a Christian uh, the person who I'm talking about and it's one of those things that you know Capitelli and, and and I and I stand with him I'm, I'm I'm white with him he's one of those people that you know he he didn't care about being um, politically correct as far as, you know, his faith and things like that is, you know, as far as keeping it to himself, he realized that he was here for a much bigger purpose. And that's from the interaction I've had with him. That's from the interaction that I, uh, I've had with people who used to team with him and work with him. And I think, uh, all the, all the people who knew him and they say, man, the, the dude was angelic. You know, he was the nicest guy, that um, you could ever work with in the business. And he loved wrestling. Uh, he loved Christ. He loved his family, loved his wife. And he really was a an inspiration in the pro wrestling business. And, you know, it, it, it's I know that I'm going to see him again. So my, my vantage point from it is uh, God – blessed us with 38 years, almost 39 years of, of having Matt Capitelli on this earth. And, um, you know, it's, that's young, you know, that's a young age and a lot, and it's, it's tough for people to digest. Of course, his family is going through a lot right now. So our prayers are with his family, but it's like one of those things, man, it's, uh, it's, it's a blessing to have someone on this earth even if it was only 38 years, it's such a blessing that he will leave a legacy for someone who stood his ground uh, on his faith and didn't waver and was an inspiration to so many people. Yeah, his body might, his, his physical body and his physical presence, uh, as far as just uh, his, his, his body, his tangible body. Yeah, you know, he, he, he was with us for 38 years, but it's one of those things, man. If you leave a legacy, it don't matter how old you are, man. Um, you know, you can be 21, 40, 60. If you are here and realize that you're here for much more than yourself, um, and age doesn't mean anything. Uh, and so I, that's how I feel about Capitelli, uh, that his faith drove him. And um, it, it's one of those things that even even at 38, I'm blessed and honored that, and I'm sure that people who work with them can say this even to a greater degree than I can. Uh, blessed that God gave us 38 years of Him, and um, my prayer is that uh, others will, you know, be inspired to 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 stand firm uh, on what they believe, and and uh, so I, that's a blessing to me. It's it's a tough time, without a doubt. It's it's a tough time uh, to, to, to witness, uh, this, his family, uh, it's, it's tough, you know, uh, his wife, Lindsay, um, she, she blogs a lot. And even when he was ill, she wanted people to, to see the, see the God in them. Um, and it's tough for her and she's heartbroken. Of course she is, you know, that's, that's, that's her spouse. That's the love of her life. But, um, you know, I, 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 I'm sure, based on my interaction with Lindsay, uh, I'm sure that um, God is consoling her through this time in her family and that, you know, she will continue the legacy of Matt Capitelli uh, as long as uh, as long as she lives. So um, those are my thoughts on Matt. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, God was able to uh, bless us with, um, with with 38 years, almost 39 years of him. So. My, uh, I, I'm happy that, um, you know, he, I'm happy that I'll be able to see him again. So we'll be, we'll be doing some pancakes and power slams, uh, up in a much better place. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have a, um, I, I don't, I think I invited Kent Lefebvre a couple of years ago. Um, 
to be on the show. I do. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm good buddies with Carl Snow. Uh, you know, shout out. I can't forget them. They were killing me. David Hero uh, for Russell Report. Shout out to them. A uh, big personal friend of mine. That's me helping. <laughs> David Hero, uh, real quick. Real, real quick, David Hero, uh, he, he messaged me on Facebook yesterday. He was like, happy birthday, handsome. I thought that, that was the funniest thing. That was hilarious. Yeah, he does that. Yeah. Him, him and also, uh, he had a lot of good times. Uh, some things we can't talk about on air. Uh, and there's nothing that I did, but uh, to protect the boys. Um, they, 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 they didn't want to do the handsome. They're like, yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 That's what they did, but um. I sat in the house, you know, at, you know, the next half of Southern thing, and I, I inboxed him a few years ago, and I guess I, you got the privilege to talk to his wife, and I was cool to his wife, but I was knowing so many people in the business uh, that, that worked with him and know him, uh, you know, her blog that came out, I think, a month ago was very hard. Um, yeah. So, and yep. I, I'm, unfortunately for me, I've been in the shoes of watching that loved one go through chemo, go through radiation, uh, you know, during that last days, uh, you know, with my grandmother, uh, uh, my uncle, my mother, he passed me with the father figure. So I know in that right, what it's like to watch someone you love to start the climbing. Uh, and, and that's tough. And I couldn't even imagine uh, the worst scenario of, of her being her husband, her best friend. Yeah. But like you said, the good thing is uh, he's the man of faith. Uh, he believed and trusted God to the end. You know, me and you are both a uh, uh, men of God, and we'll get to see him again in heaven and you know, be paying cakes and waffles and power slams and everything. Yeah. Body and <laughs> that's what you can uh, you know, do all the moves you can. You don't have to care about no more hindrances. So, that's uh, right. That's uh, right. And, uh, <laughs> definitely praying for her. Yep. And, and the fourth thing, too, is that. And when it's fresh, and I can talk about this, for, I can talk about this from firsthand knowledge. When it's fresh, you know, since it's been a week or two since now we're gone, people got to realize that I pray that her family in, in, in the industry, a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, still contact her and check on her. The first couple of weeks, you know, you'll get flooded with phone calls and visits. After two or three months, they kind of start going. And that's the time when they really, really release you. So, yeah, definitely. yeah. Continued support, absolutely. Yep, 100%. Uh, wow, boy. Uh, prayers for you. I passed away from breast cancer in October. So, yeah, prayers prayers for you and uh, just, uh, just the uh, continued support uh, for your family and uh, for to be able to reach out to. Um, to, to people who you love to help you through this tough time. So, uh, all right. So they're, uh, so they're in the, in the chat room. They're talking about Brock Lesnar. If it's a work, you know, I was having this conversation with, uh, as far as, cause there's talks of the film, not appearing at SummerSlam. I was having to talk to a good friend of mine and, you know, here's the thing. If it's a work or if it's not at this point, I just don't even care. You know, it's like, just end the Brock Lesnar experiment, <laughs> you know, it's just, just, just end it, you know? So, uh, all right. So here's the first trivia question, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of Fred Ottman, what was Fred Ottman's name before he was tugboat in WWE? What was Fred in WWE? And he was a couple variations of tugboat, uh, like I think like tugboat Thomas and things like that. So, before even just shortening it to tugboat, you know, no tugboat counts. He was he was a few a few uh, months before he debuted as tugboat. He actually debuted as a heel. And so, what was his name? Uh, all right, so let's talk about Bray Wyatt. Uh, just our prayers for a speedy recovery for Bray Wyatt. He was in a car accident, head on, totaled his car. I told. Um, TMZ that, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he'll live through it cause he cannot die or something to that nature. So, uh, see tugboat Taylor. Yes, but tugboat doesn't count because he was, he was still tugboat. He was, he was variations of tugboat. He was tugboat Taylor. I think it was like tugboat Thomas or something like that. He was, he was called a few things and they just shortened it to tugboat. 
and that was but that he was something before that you know so what was his name he debuted as a heel what was his name before tug broke so uh let's see do you do you see this as a setup to take it versus daniel bryan it's a uh, summer slam I don't, uh, I don't see Taker and Brian going against each other. It has to be a good development, you know. Like, why are they going against each other, you know? And and I definitely don't want Taker to be competing as a heel. That would just be horrible, um, especially at this stage of his career. So, uh, all right. So uh, Taz, Taz feels. So what? What do you all think about Aleister Black's promos? We talked about this before, and and in, uh, in Tug, you know, Taz was talking about how. He feels that his promos hurt his mystique. And so a lot of times, um, Undertaker versus Elias at SummerSlam. No, I wouldn't say that's a SummerSlam match. I would say that, uh, yeah. I wish they would have done that at MSG. I think it's like a uh, six-man match. Um, but I w- they, that would have been nice if they did that at MSG, but definitely not on SummerSlam for sure. Because um, they, man, pfft. Talk about WWE improperly booking people. Elias was the hottest thing, one of the hottest things in WWE. But I mean, he's as cold as they, they've they've chilled him for for no reason. Why would you chill one of the hottest one of the hottest names in WWE? It makes no sense. Um, yeah. So someone's asking, what would be a good opponent for Undertaker? That's a question. Uh, I'll get back to that here in, in, in just a bit. But Taz feels that Aleister Black's promos is is, uh, is hurting his mystique, and I agree. It's uh, he was saying that he doesn't he doesn't prefer him in a suit either because the whole tattoos and the whole th- that all helps his mystique. So I agree with him. Um, at, at you know the funny thing about that is that the, in the very beginning of his you know big push especially when he was feeding against Velveteen Dream, the whole point of, I mean, the the, the, the centerpiece of the, the feud was for Dream. Uh, Dream wanted Aleister Black to say his name. And that was two words. <laughs> that was two words. And now he says way too many words. He didn't say anything. And it, it, and the, the, the heart and soul of the feud was him to, to say his name. And it was so amazing that just the the feud, the story, the match was incredible. All of that just wrapped in was, I mean, still, I mean, it won the match of the year in NXT. And it, it was definitely one of the best matches in the past few years in, in all of WWE. But that's because there was a good story behind it. But now it's like, man, you why? The past few weeks, they just they give Alistair Black. He's he's like opened up NXT on the uh, promo. I'm like, why are you doing that? And they're just, I mean, you just kill the mystique of someone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't give him a mic as if that's going to help. I mean, Alistair Black's NXT championship run all together has been kind of bland to me, really. Um, he didn't even main event. Uh, the Lars Sullivan match wasn't even the main event. I got shrouded by Gargano Ciampa, so you know I don't I don't think that uh, I don't know. It's, it looks like they're kind of doing Ciampa uh, in black. Um, they were kind of doing Ricochet in black after the UK tag team victory they had, but it seems like they're heading toward Ciampa black, which would be very interesting. I think they should give the title to Ciampa for sure because um, he's the best heel in all of WWE. Um, I, I think they need to give it to Velveteen Dream eventually. Uh, he need uh, I I think Velveteen Dream should be NXT champion before before he gets called up for sure. So, uh, but yeah, he just uh, you know, Alistair Black has just kind of fell down the stock for me. I, I just I don't know. He just talks too much. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. Some of the things, some of the like showmen, other people just talking too much. And the same thing with Alice the Black. Some people just the mystique is them not talking. Like you just interview, you know, you interview Goldberg, you know, and I got to interview him two years ago. Goldberg didn't talk. 
Some people are just men of little words. That's what makes them who they are. That was the black should not be talking. Yeah. The women should not be doing these wrong promos. Kills his mistake. They take me to mistake. Yep. Absolutely. So no one knows who Fred Alman name was before Tugboat. Uh, so I, I started out with a, a difficult question is what I'm is what I'm gathering. Happy fourth, by the way. It's uh, on the eastern time uh, on the east coast is past midnight. It's officially July the fourth. So happy fourth, everyone. Um uh, thank God and, uh, and the, uh, you know, shout out to the man, you know, they, they, uh, they, they make our freedom a lot easier to enjoy. So absolutely. Uh, JSP said, Nope, you got me on this trivia. All right. Looks like I got everybody. Um, here, right, here we go. He was called big man steel, <laughs> big man steel, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds like a, uh, big man steel man just the names in the 80s were just uh the blandest sounding names that just wouldn't yeah odd wild boy says happy fourth to the best group chat ever well looks like someone got uh the applause for the night there you go i'm put you over wild boy yep i'm putting you over for putting over the chat room and putting over the show thank you very much for that um all right, next. Big, big man, man steel. <laughs> oh, goodness. Poor Bobby Walker. Uh, what was the one? Big Bubba was a pretty bland name, too. Big Bubber. Yeah, Big Bubber. Big Bubber, baby. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sexton Harcastle. That was a, yeah, Edge. Edge. Uh, yeah, that was Edge's name before he was Edge. Edge's name, and it's and it's another. It's, uh, and this won't bug me. I'll find out this week and tell you next week in the chat. Mm. It's a, it's a handsome channel for WWF. Friends on Facebook, and he had a generic name that was like Big Man Steel. I can't think of it, but he was joking around. Big Man Steel. I was in the eighties and in the nineties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> funny story real quick. Um, out of respect of the promoter and of the promotion and of the event, and, and this is where I interviewed over a few years ago, and a lot of people it was at a hall of fame. Me, and my staff, a bunch of people that know me, that didn't know. And then the guy came out, a bunch of nice things, talking. It was a local guy, so we think it was somebody big. I'm like, hey, you know, we had rose sodas and. This man has been so much on the area. He's such great. And we sitting there thinking it's somebody, you know, like Glacier or somebody, you know. He says, I'm going to work on my body. I'm going to go and duck my good old friend's house. Nightmare, Jim Steele. <laughs> and the whole area people just quiet. <laughs> and Glacier, oh. Ernest and Cat literally looked at each other. And I looked at him. He was like, who was that? And that's PG version of what he said. I heard 12 witnesses, and uh, Glacier, <laughs> Funny Arnold, can contribute to this. So when I hear it, I love a generic name. Yes. Uh, DHP. So I was going, man. Nightmare Jim Steele. That's it right the there. Joke. <laughs> and then I said that, and this is the most generic name. He had the, the generic black types with the Thunderbolt. Oh, wow. Wow. Midnight Express. Uh, nice guy, you know, not taking away from local legends. They just, everyone thought it was, you know, uh, you know a couple, somebody that would know that's a couple, you know, Jeremy Gavin getting inducted and Gavin's coming it up and it's being one of the local characters. Yeah. I'm Jim Steele. Uh, that's quite, uh, quite generic. Yeah. Uh, Rob is saying that Dream may be better as a North American champ. I can see that. I can see that as well. But I think he should win the top prize. He's the, he's you know one of the best things going in all of WWE right now. So, um, yeah, he's the man. Who managed Big Bully Busick? Talking about generic names, ladies and gentlemen. 
uh, unfortunately, he he left us. Uh, he passed away recently. But uh, here's uh, here's a question in honor of him. Who managed him? Big Bully Busick in WWE. Now, I do remember Busick. Um, <laughs> me and me and the voice impressions. Yeah. Um, you know, my, two of my favorites are Vincent Mann and Dusty Rhodes. You know, uh, th- those are the two I do mostly. Um, because it's just so it's so easy, baby. It's so it's so easy to impress the the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby. <laughs> uh, yes, the pay window. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I say to this, to, to, to this day, and I think, and I sort of sort of check this. Whatever I fall down, which you know, this 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 month as a whole is tough for me. I will always go back. I don't care how bad I feel to watch Bash of the Beach '96. Anything in the '90s with Tony Schiavone, Bobby Heenan. Dusty Rhodes and the Mike Tene. Mm-hmm. The commentary alone. I, I don't care how you feel. You <laughs> know, I've said this. I, I, I haven't got a chance to tell Tony this. Is when I was going through, my mom passed away this time last year. That was some of the stuff that you this show, my show, watching some of them old tapes that had me laughing. And Dusty and his Bobby is talking. You know, Shivani being a straight man. And, and all this is the frog splash. The frog splash. You know, the frog splash. You know, the frog splash. What is the frog splash? It is the frog splash. 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 Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want him to come back full time. I think that if he did it like sporadically, that would that would do it. But sometimes, sometimes less is more. So uh, I would bring him back sporadically. Um, all right. Looks like we got some correct answers in the chat. Harvey Whippleman is the correct answer. Great job, Harvey Whippleman. Good stuff. Um, pay window. I just, I, <laughs> yes, I, I miss, I, I miss Mongo, the commentary said never, you know, so said no one ever. So specifically me, uh, <laughs> no way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, was Nakamura scheduled to beat Jeff for U.S. title last week? Um, there were some there were some discussions of him doing that. Yes, uh, they changed it to the open challenge as he is recovering from his bite. Extreme rules next week. I don't think we're going to talk much about Raw and SmackDown. We're just going to kind of skim through that because I really want to. I really want to talk about uh, No Holds Barred. Um, Joseph said he didn't enjoy Raw this week. Uh, yes, Busick did have the best mustache in the business. I remember Busick more. You know, I remember watching him in WWE, but I remember Busick more uh, in global global wrestling. I was a I was a GWF mark. I loved Global Wrestling Federation, and that's where I remember Busick from. All right, what city and state was the big boss man build from in WWE? What city and state was the big boss man build from in WWE? Or as Nell would or as Nels would say, boss man. Uh yes, well boy, shout out to Jay Lethal. Um I I don't want to spoil it, but Jay Lethal. Google Jay Lethal if you want to know. Uh I, I did spoil it on my I I disclaimed it with spoiler on social media, but uh we'll talk about it more when um when it actually happens for people who for always fans who don't like to be spoiled. Um, that, that's that. Um, all right. If you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, <laughs> what's the lyrics to that song? Uh, 
Oh man, let me see. Uh, let's see. Um, I gotta t- I, 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 um, respect the law. In order. Yeah, I, I have to find out the lyrics. I mean, I, I, I've looked. At, I've looked at the list. I've looked at the lyrics. I've looked at the lyrics before, but I don't remember. I used to remember these songs like crazy back in the day. So. Uh, at least boss man had a little uh, uh so a little a little drum uh intro um oh i think i found the lyrics ladies and gentlemen i'm excited <clears throat> oh no. that whole guardian angel gimmick was uh, was bad the black uh, what, what, what was that uh, Sting and Bossman, what was the answer to Blackout match? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. What was, <laughs> oh, they just seen that angel match that made no sense. No. Oh, of course, man. the, uh, the, um, it was, oh, goodness, what was it? Yeah, was it, um, Oh, the 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 match with uh, Dustin Rhodes and um, Smash uh, Blacktop Bully. That's uh, that match was. About the, uh, the, the, um, oh yeah. That was in the back of the trailer. Yeah. If y'all remember that match in the chat room, uh, let us know that what was the what was the official name for that match between Dustin Rhodes and uh, Blacktop Bully? It was it was bad either way. But uh, if you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, you better this the law in order you'll serve hard times. You'll be serving hard times. So the big boss man and make you walk the line. You better watch that boy. You'll be serving hard times. <laughs> I'm mean, in Jimmy Hart days. Uh, <laughs> just amazing, amazing theme songs. Big fan of it. All right, so let's skim through the rest of this here. Uh, Nia Jax and uh, Ronda Rousey was discussed to be a main event of Money in the Bank. Um, to kind of you know take the just to kind of add to the emphasis of Alexa Bliss uh, winning the women's championship. Uh, I I don't agree with this. For from the standpoint of Nia Jack, not from the standpoint of Ronda Rousey, I think that she's, I mean, she's earning her stripes really quick, man. Sasha Banks said recently in an interview that uh, she was, you know, she was critical at first, you know, wondering like, you know, hey, she's coming in here and, you know, kind of jumping the line. But it's, and, and Lana said that Lana had an interview recently too and saying that, you know, she was supportive day one. Um, yeah, but I, I think I think Rousey, man, she she's doing her thing. Oh, okay. So uh, there was a, there was a couple questions. One, uh, what who's Undertaker's going to face at SummerSlam? My guess would be, um, you know what? To be honest with you, I don't want. I, I, I say this, and I keep con- I continue to say this. I think that Undertaker should have been retired, <laughs> but. Um, if this was, uh, hmm, if I would have the Undertaker compete against, um, I would be cool with the Undertaker Nakamura match. Uh, yeah, I think Undertaker Nakamura would be pretty cool, but I think that they'll do the the U.S. Championship. You don't do Undertaker Rusev because that'll take away Undertaker's mystique because he's, you know, the Rusev day thing's real hot. 
There's, I mean, the the heel. The, there's the the. There's not many strong heels anymore, man. I mean, really, there's not. Any, there's even less strong baby faces. So if you bring the Undertaker back, you can't just throw him in there. Oh, you know what, Taker Joe. That's what I'll do. That's what I'm. I'm cool with Taker Joe. I would. I would still. I would put. It, I would still have Undertaker win. Joe Samoa Joe losing to the Undertaker wouldn't hurt him at all, in my opinion. So I would do Undertaker versus Samoa Joe. So that would be my my choice. Um, what match do you think with main event Extreme Rules? I believe. Um, what match will enter will, will main event Extreme Rules? I think you go with the no, because you don't do AJ Styles Rusev because that doesn't really spark much interest. I suppose you go Reigns Lashley. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess you go that that route. What do I think of uh, Oscar James Ellsworth angle? Uh, I mean, it's a it's a way to bring more heat to Carmella, so I don't mind him a bit. I don't mind him back. Um yeah. Take her take her Joe for SummerSlam is what I'm is what I'm I, I want that. Where's Joe Ben? He's he's uh he's been competing in their live events. They just they just been poorly booking people. Elias has been fine. They just haven't booked him right. Um they haven't booked Joe <laughs> really right. Uso's kind of you know being tossed here and there, you know. So I don't know. Um, all right, so real quick, we're all on SmackDown. Um, we'll do, uh, you know, Raw. Raw was uh, not very good uh, to me, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, Matt Hardy continuing to lose. I, I don't understand why they do that. I mean, it's like you're trying to help, to do this whole delete thing, but you're losing consecutive times against. Curtis Axel, I know, of course, you know, the WWE math is they're making, according to WWE logic, is we're building all these credible wins for uh, Curtis Axel because they're, the B team's going to lose, you know, but still, I mean, it just, it, it doesn't look, it doesn't make the champions look strong if they, they, they lose simultaneous i mean and consecutively before you know before the pay-per-view um lexi says it's wrong for me to crave an undertaker kane retirement match because kane is mayor elect see and here's my thing with that since he's about to be mayor officially since he's mayor elect uh i don't see the team hell no thing lasting long because he'll be in office um i don't see that's the reason why they probably they're they're doing i think it's kind of twofold it's, it's kind of cool to see it now but it's kind of twofold i think one they're trying to i mean there's some talks that wwe is not really trying to do much with Dan brian right now uh as far as a main event level because he because of you know he hasn't signed reportedly still his contract's up in in a couple of months so uh and then secondly they're trying to do a filler probably because they still see money in uh, Daniel Bryan and the Miz. So, uh, which I don't really see much interest in that as much, you know, and it's still, it's still there, but not as much anymore because both of them haven't been strongly booked. Um, uh, am I, I'm interested in Bailey Sasha storyline. I think it's being dragged too, too much. Um, there's, you know, as much as I like Doctor Shelby when he was with Kane and uh, and and um, Daniel Bryan, man, it's like WWE knows how to make something that seems impossible to be, look bad look bad because Doctor Shelby looked terrible. <laughs> you know, uh, as far as just it just looked awkward. It was just so it was just so awkward. You know, granted. Kane and Daniel Bryan was awkward at first and it became awesome, but I don't know. I, I'm not very optimistic as far as this becoming something interesting. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as questions right now. Keep them coming. 
Uh, but yeah, Raw was uh, decent. Uh, I, I, I'm st- I still want Lastly Lesnar. I still, I still do. Um, and Mickey James is, you know, unfortunate for Mickey James, man. I mean, you know, shoe win first ballot Hall of Famer, and she loses every single match now. Unfortunately, they're trying to do something with the revival. Go ahead. Go ahead. You had something to share about that? All right, I'll go. Yep. I don't know why they need to be heated without this same people they they bring that stuff down so much. Elias is all putting it on Joe. Uh, hopefully, we get Lashley against Lesnar. Lashley was the perfect player right now. What are they doing? Mickey James can't breathe. He's like, what are y'all doing? Man, Hardy's lead. I understand my Hardy's in the woods looking for the hard crash. Yeah. Here's here's my thing. Go ahead. You was excited. Oh man, yes, that's going to be. Yes, that's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I. Uh, there was something. Oh yeah, you you don't book Elias, but Mojo Rawley and. Uh, no way, Jose gets a gets a segment. Uh, just what? That's not that's not a pay per view match. Who cares about? I mean, I don't care about either one of them. I mean, granted, and unfortunately, no way, Jose. I mean, yeah, he gets a spot on Raw. I mean, that's big for him. I'm sure his pay um, could potentially go up. Usually, it does with the main roster, but. I mean, I care. I can care less about this whole "No Way Jose" Mozzarella thing. I, who? Why would the WWE spend much time in investing into this segment where you have someone who you have you have uh, Elias, you know, who is just ready made every single week to be the star of Raw, but for some reason. You know, it it just it's so odd to me. It just makes absolutely no sense. Uh yes, Joseph Reigns versus Lesnar is still the plan for SummerSlam as of now. Uh there's a question. Oh, who I think comes up from NXT next from NXT and when? Uh I can see I can see uh, Gargano coming up soon, probably after Survivor Se- uh SummerSlam. Uh, so it looks like they they're doing away with the Gargano Champa feud, and um, Gargano EC3 looks like they may be that may be a thing, and so you know I can see Gargano coming up and joining 205 Live after uh, after SummerSlam. Uh, have you ever noticed that the ladies tied to the bigger build wrestlers? Rock and Cena have the biggest push. Carmelo Cena, Nikki Cena, Trish Rock, Mickey Cena. Interesting. I can see that. I can see that. Um, Miz should have won Money in the Bank. No, I don't. I don't, I don't agree with that. He yeah, he didn't need it. Um, do I ever see the Young Bucks or Omega coming to WWE? Uh, I see Omega much uh, stronger than the Bucks. I can see both, but the Bucks, you know, they're like, yeah, we don't need it. It'll be cool, but we don't need it. Um, but Omega's money, and yeah, um, yeah. Jerry says Joe should have won Money in the Bank. That was my pick, actually. I wanted Big E to win, but I think Joe would, uh, you know, that was my safe bet. Do I see Cody Rhodes or John Morrison coming back? I see both coming back. Soon, uh, not, uh, not, like, not soon, but Cody. Maybe longer than that. Yeah, probably yeah, longer than that. Cody is doing, and I was at the RH, you know, show Friday. We talking about that Chiefs. Cody's doing so well right now. Like I said, they'll probably get Chiefs again. Cody, 
even the size to come back. And I think once he he, he gets the most, Cody's at his best now being independent. Morrison, right? He, I, I could see Morrison coming back from the game. I mean, Morrison is doing a good good guy, by the way. Um, John John is a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Morrison's doing some things off, but he could benefit more with WWE as of right now. Cody, yeah. Yeah, I've had him on my show before, and he, you know, he was talking about then and in, in, in other interviews of how like he's at the point now where he's like really enjoying, you know, being a part of everything. He really has his hand just about everything. There's reports saying he wants to be in New Japan. He's wrestling in AAA. Uh, he's wrestling in Impact, and so you know he's he's making he's doing some good stuff. Um, the thing is with Cody though, if WWE still, even if he went to WWE, even with this big stock, I don't, I still don't think WWE would push him as much as, you know, he's getting pushed now as far as star power. So, uh, GHP is saying, starting to believe that WWE isn't pushing Balor because of his size. That's a, that's a good point because, uh, Vince McMahon is a size guy and, um, you know the the fact that they they're not, they're not doing the demon character anymore too because a lot of times character I mean just with wrestling period care if you have a good character it if you have a large and life character it makes size not matter as much and when he was the demon you know when he would come out it just it was so large in life that his size really it w- really wasn't the focal point but now since he just comes out as just regular Finn Balor. You know, he doesn't, there's nothing really appealing to him. I like Finn, but yeah. Jerry's asking, is there a particular dream match that I still want to see? Mm, great question. We'll get to, um, we'll go. Ah, Sting against the, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. And you, and, and you, and you know, what's coming. You know, what's coming. You know, what's coming. Yeah, that's uh, that's no longer a dream match for me. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Uh, we was there. We was there live, and we saw Taker at his worst with Roman Reigns. And we was there this year when Taker looked absolutely great. He looked great, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, I mean, come on, man. I mean, granted, I, I, I still like to see Taker. I mean, granted, I, I would like to see. I would like to see Taker Goldberg. I mean, I mm. Goldberg said, uh, yeah, he Goldberg once taker. Yeah, that's for sure. I'll get back. I'll come back to that. Um, remind me. I'll, I'll come back to that real quick. Just real quick, SmackDown thoughts because we got to do. Uh, we got to spend the next ten minutes or so talking about No Holds Barred. All right. Um, Jeff Hardy Miz was a good match. I'm glad they kept it on J- Jeff Hardy. Looks like Nakamura is going to take it. Uh, New Day Sanity. I mean, it makes sense because it's a trios, you know, type of feud. But, uh, you know, I, Sanity's not really. I like Sanity. Is for. I mean, their NXT is was awesome, but I don't really. You know, I, I'm not really big on Sanity right now for some reason. And I've and I've always like. I've been. I'm. I've been so supportive of Eric Young throughout the years. I'm so glad he's got his, his shot. But, you know. Hopefully, hopefully New Day doesn't put them over. Um, that's really about it. I could see Oscar winning the championship. I wish that she would have won. I wish she would win it at SummerSlam, really. Uh, but we'll see what, how that goes. And then AJ Styles, man, he just as, as awesome as AJ is. I mean, he's doing nothing to lift up that championship. WD is poor, uh, booking him so poorly. All right, so let's go back to the dream match. Uh, as far as everybody who's in the WWE right now. Us, um, so I'll just do WWE for I'll just do WWE. You, you didn't specify, but I was just we'll just do WWE. Everybody who's in the WWE right now, I would like to see, um, a dream match. Oh, goodness, dream match. That's just tough because I don't think really dream matches exist really <laughs> nowadays in the WWE. Um, Let's do <sighs> I think I'll stick with Taker Joe. You know what? Let's do Lashley Lesnar. That's what okay, that's my answer. Lashley Lesnar. So 
uh, because I want to. I'm still cool with Roman Reigns and Le, uh, last, you know, beating Lesnar, taking it off of him. But we haven't seen Les, Lesnar Lashley, and that's uh, that's that's what I, that's my uh, my answer. Uh, do you think it's smart of the WWE hire more wrestlers for a UK division when they poorly use the talent they already have? Um, yeah, because that's a whole different animal. Like it's you know hiring for the UK division. And it's specifically to UK. So we'll see about that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Flare of the Week, ladies, uh, we, we will spend this next 10 minutes and we are going to talk about some no holes barred. So when we come back, <laughs> get ready, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk some, we're going to talk some uh, no holes barred. So we'll be right back. It is now time for the flavor of the week. 1989, ladies and gentlemen, 1989, no holds barred. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you know, and like I said, I watched it fresh and, um, you know, it, 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 I, you know, it's still one of those things that if it was playing, if it played now, it would be like two thumbs down, terrible, terrible movie if it was played in 2018. But the, I, I couldn't help but to get into my little kid, you know, mode. I, I couldn't help but to do that uh, when, when I was watching the movie. I, I just I, I could not. I, I could not get out of just being just a kid mark when I was watching that movie tonight. And so it served this purpose to me. If I was seeing it for the first time, I'll be like, man, what is this trash? But at the same time, it's like watching it now compared to the last time I watched it years ago, there was things that I was discovering like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. And so I just couldn't help but to just stay in my inner child mark you know, a uh, portion of, uh, you, do, you know, just uh, the movie. And so I, I felt like that the whole time. It was shorter than I thought. It was like an hour and 15 minutes. So I didn't I didn't know that it was that short. Um, so, yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah. Thank you for bringing the <laughs> bringing, thank you for bringing that back up, Rob. So uh, Hogan. Um, all right. So let's let's go back. Hogan comes out uh, as Rip. That was how he you know, let it rip. Phew, that was his thing, you know, blue and white Rip. That was his gimmick. That was his gimmick name was Rip. And so um, we're talking about the movie. Um, so yeah, so uh, he comes out. Uh, uh, Gene Oakland and Jesse Ventura announces him. Uh, to go so the, the the movie starts out by saying you know rip he's going against jake bullet okay so when i looked at it today you know bullet hey, he started off with having this big old you know huge box you know type of hairdo really odd just regular you know navy blue tights and i was like wait a minute that's bill Eady. And I, and I never, I never noticed that. I never noticed that Jake Bullet was Demolition Axe. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And I, and I just confirmed. I, I googled it when I was watching it. I was like, "That Bill lady." And I did. I never. The one of the first, first people you see in the whole movie was Axe from Demolition which was uh, Bill Eady. And so, yeah, he was Jake Bullet, just a blandest type of character. You know, I'm talking about, we're talking about bland names and characters. He looked bland. He was Jake Bullet, and uh, Hogan's uh, Hogan's finisher was a double, I think, double axe handle. And uh, <laughs> that was interesting. What's up with axe handles? What's up with axe handles and in, in, in wrestlers in wrestling movies? Because if you remember Ready to Rumble, Jimmy King had a, uh, a, a axe handle off the top ropes. So I don't know why movie producers like 
axe handle, uh, the the axe handle. That's that, that's a that's an odd thing. Um, so it's funny because Rip was actually the WWE champion. That was his whole deal, you know. Um, yeah, it, it was <laughs> it, that was his deal to be WWE star. I was like, so that's cool because at the at the very end of the movie. You know, and so the in between the movie at the end, at the end, you have the the, the big showdown between Hulk Hogan and Zeus. Zeus, um, uh, the, the the TV producer for the World Television Network, um, and he wanted to sign Rip, you know, to 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 be his guy. Um, Rip beats Jake Bullet. He meets up with the uh, the producer. Rip says no, and he gets upset. The guy gets upset. You know, he gives him a blank check. He said, write your amount. And he said no again. And, and so, yeah, and, and so, uh, he you know, he chastises Rip. He gets in his face. And so he, you know, Rip pretends as if he's going to sign it, and he grabs him, you know, by the neck, and he shoves the check down his throat. Yeah, and so he and and so the producer he gets livid. You know, he tries to trap him in a limo. Um, and so he didn't uh yeah, Stan Hansen scared. Yeah, that's funny. Uh Zeus gave me nightmare as yeah, yes, Rob is saying this here. Um and so uh so yeah, the, so basically what happened after that was um so so the producer um so 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 the producer uh basically um <laughs> the, the the producer gets really really upset and he's like okay so I'm I'm going to I'm going to get someone to go against Rip um and he goes to this pit fighting bar and he sees just this bunch of you know tobacco chewing you know dirty haired people pit fighting and and so he makes it a thing as far as like a last man standing and then zeus comes in oh ah, ah, that was the only thing he said most most of the movie ah, ah. <laughs> and uh and he would just he'd throw people ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and uh and so that was his deal he, he just had to make that weird sound the whole movie and the producer was like i this is who i want this is the guy that can take out rip because rip thinks the world below you know it, it just it just the when he was on the, the the silhouette and all that and so at the end um the, you know, and this is what I, uh, oh yeah, the whole thing when he was, he had, he had the guy in the limo driver, you know, he, he was, uh, he, he wet himself. He, uh, uh, you know, soiled himself and Hogan was like, what's that smell? And the guy was like, dookie. So that's one of the funniest parts of the movie. Uh, and so at the end, okay, real quick, Hogan's street clothes was absolutely terrible. I mean, like it was just he wore like gym tights and uh, a weight belt and just like a tight shirt in his in his do rag. And I was like, man, I mean, dude, your wardrobe choice is horrible. I mean, it, it was one of the times where he wore like a uh, like blue tights with like um, it was like cheetah print or leopard print. It was it was terrible. Uh, it was horrible. Um, but at the end, real quick, we got to run. But at the end, I was like, you know what? So at the end of uh, at the end of the show, at the end of the, you know, he, he, it was it seemed insurmountable. He was getting beat up by Rip. At the end, uh, Hogan prevailed because Rip. Uh, I, I mean, uh, um, Rip prevailed because Zeus took out his uh, his uh, little brother Randy, put him in a wheelchair, and. Uh, Hogan's trainer was used to be Zeus's trainer, but it went awry and, and so forth. So um, 
And uh, thank you. That's a perfect Seuss impression, Rob says. Um, but so this is one thing that I took away from this whole thing. And uh, before we before we close up shop tonight, is that the match that they had at the end for the World Television Network is uh, it was not a WWE show. It was for the World Television Network. It was this big old, you know, last man thing that became something. So that was like it, they took this pit fighting thing and, and made it, you know, television televised. So I was like, you know what? Technically, back in 1989 was WWE's first interaction with an indie company. How about that? <laughs> now they're doing stuff with Evolve and and uh you know progress and all types of uk stuff but i was like you know what technically back in 89 is when uh wwe started working with indies uh so you know that was my takeaway from the uh from the no holds barred it was a good movie man i I was in my uh, i had my little kid in me and it was uh i enjoyed watching no holds barred today it really made my day so all right ladies and gentlemen we got a roll uh as always it's been a pleasure it's been so much fun uh, 327 episodes in the book, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody who's in the chat, uh, follow at Chris Prolific, follow at Crave Wrestling. Let the people know about the Pancakes and Power Slam show. Subscribe to iTunes, leave a positive remark. Let the people know about how awesome it is. Until now, until next week, Lord willing, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your week of wrestling. God bless. And always remember, I do it for you. Have a good night, everybody. Bye bye.